here's part five of World's Scariest Prisons. Burlington County Prison. The Burlington County Prison in New Jersey was built in 1811 with the dual purpose of holding prisoners and rehabilitating them. At that time, the idea that prisoners should be treated decently and could be taught to see the error of their ways was new. Burlington County Prison was unique because it had ventilation, fireplaces and cells, a garden and common rooms, all of which were installed for the prisoners' benefit. Inmates were bathed and deloused upon entry and given a Bible. So this was, so still this was a prison, and prisoners were not happy to be there. Inmates tried to escape many times. During one escape in 1875, inmates hacked a hole in the corridor ceiling and made it out. Also known as Haunted Prison, located in Mount Holly Township, New Jersey, operational 1811 to 1965. Number of prisoners, more than 100 inmates at a time. A notable inmates is Joel Klaub, whose ghost is said to haunt the prison. Joel Klaug was not so successful. He was imprisoned in the massive stone building early in the 19th century. While awaiting sentencing, he managed to escape. He was caught and sent to a maximum security cell known as the Dungeon. In the Dungeon, guards kept watch over the prisoners at all times. Klaug was sentenced to death in 1833. Soon after, inmates reported hearing moans and rattling chains and claimed to have seen objects floating in midair. While the building was being restored in 1999, construction workers reported hearing loud voices and feeling wild temperature changes. Missing objects suddenly turned up in odd places. The Burlington County Prison remained in use until 1965. Today it is a museum and possibly the home of Joel Klaus' ghosts. Prisoners or Penitents Before the 19th century, it was uncommon for prisoners to receive such basic rights as access to adequate food, shelter, and hygiene. Most people believed that the convicted felons were irredeemable sinners, but early in the 1800s, reformers began to work on behalf of criminals. They believed it was society's job to see that prison inmates were fed and dressed and not beaten or tortured. What's more, the reformers argued, it was possible to teach prisoners not to, not to commit crimes again. These ideas revolutionized the prison system. Inmates were no longer starved or tortured in state and country county prisons. They were usually given adequate clothes and food, as well as access to toilets and sinks. But overcrowding crowding, and abuse from guards and wardens continues to be a problem in many prisons even today. Eastern State Penitentiary after Eastern State Penitentiary, ESP opened its doors in 1829 and became one of the most famous prisons in the world. It was one of the first true penitentiaries, a place where prisoners could be taught to see the error of their ways. The inmates at ESP lived in silence and were not permitted to interact with one another or with the guards. They even had to wear hoods over their heads when outside of their cells. If prisoners had time to think about their crimes, prisoner Prison officials reasoned they would come to regret their actions. This was later called the Pennsylvania system or the solitary system. Behind the bars, also known as ESP, located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, operational 1829 to 1971. Number of prisoners, 450 inmates at a time. Notable inmates, Willie Sutton, bank robber, and Al Capone, gangster. A new kind of prison. In the ESP cells, the prisoners had access to light only through a skylight and had a Bible and some amount of work or handicraft. Their meals were pushed into their cells through little doors. This focus on God and hard work was intended to help the prisoners regret their crimes. And my inmates at Eastern State were not beaten, tortured, or starved as prisoners had been during earlier eras. Furthermore, they had running water, toilets, and central heat. During a time when many people in society had no indoor plumbing and used coal-burning stoves for heat. But the outside of the prison was designed to look scary and medieval, to appear intimidating. The interior was designed to look like a church with arches, vaulted ceilings, and tall windows. 
In later years, some common rooms were added, such as workshops and exercise yards. Yet the Brig prison was too expensive to maintain, and in 1971, it closed its doors forever. Al Capone, Eastern State Penitentiary's most notorious prisoner. After being arrested in 1929, the famed gangster Al Capone spent about one year at ESP, but he didn't exactly live in hardship. He furnished his cells with oil paintings, rugs, a radio flowers, and even antique furniture. Other accounts argue that he was not given special treatment, that the luxury was overstated. But according to all accounts, Scarface was a model prisoner. He played handball and baseball with other prisoners, worked in the prison office, read books, and wrote letters. He was also something of a philanthropist, donating money to needy families. Newspaper accounts of the day reported that Al Capone's that Capone sent money through the prison chaplain and two poor families on the outside. He paid a woman's hospital bills and offered her husband a job. Capone was given two months off his sentence for good behavior. Years later, his bad behavior would land him in three other prisons. It's weird how these are, like, apparently the world's scariest prisons, but, like... It constantly talks about how nice they were and how lovely it was to stay there. I don't think that these are the worst ones, but... Devil's Island. Just off the coast of South America, Devil's Island is one of three islands in French Guinea that makes up the Isles de Salou. It may be a beautiful island, but it's home to the world's mo to <laughs> the world's worst penal colonies. A penal colony is an isolated place where prisoners are sent to be separated from society. Inmates called it the Green Hell. More than 60,000 political prisoners and criminals were held there from 1852 until 1953 when it was finally closed. The journey to Devil's Island began on the docks of Maurice M Marcel France, where convicts were loaded onto ships bound for South America. Behind the bars, also known as the Green Hell, located in French Guinea in South America, operational 1852 to 1953, number of prisoners, more than 600,000 political prisoners. Notable inmates, Alfred Dreyfus, French artillery officer. In Transit they were kept in a temporary holding pen before the final leg of the trip to Devil's Island. When traveling by boat to Devil's Island, prisoners were held in steel cages below deck, aiding them to a cage. At the first sign of any disturbance among the men, guards would pipe boiling hot steam into the cages. Upon arrival, conditions worsened. Prisoners were forced to strip naked and allowed to only wear a hat and shoes. In this state, they performed manual labor such as cutting timber, sometimes while standing in waist-deep water. Other times, they did meaningless labor like building roads that led nowhere. Solitary confinement. By far the worst punishment in Devil's Island was solitary confinement, in which some prisoners were kept in complete darkness. Some were locked in pits in the ground with bars overhead. Unprotected from the weather, the shackled men often sat in inches of rainwater. At night, vampire bats would swoop in, bite the sleeping inmates, and suck their blood. Prisoners at Devil's Island called solitary the devourer of men, and yet escape was out of the question. The shark-filled ocean and the thick jungle surrounding the colony served as a natural and escapable barrier. Well, now I feel slightly bad for saying that the other ones were good. Because <laughs> this seems like hell. The Prison Today Today, Devil's Island has been closed for 60 years. It is open to the public and tourists to explore the decaying buildings and peer into the crumbling cells. Prison clothing. For most of history, prisoners wore clothes they had on when they were taken to jail. They were rarely allowed to wash or replace these clothes. In the 19th century, as prisoners be as prisons became more regulated, prisoners were dressed in black and white striped uniforms. These uniforms served two main purposes. First, on an emotional level, uniforms made prisoners feel like prisoners and encouraged a sense of shame. Second, on a practical level, the uniforms made prisoners easy to spot if they ever attempted to escape. At various times in the 20th century, prisoners wore jackets and gray, green, or brown cloth pants. 
Today, prisoners wear any number of different uniforms depending on the prison. Some wear orange one-piece jumpsuits, especially when being transported so they are more visible. Prisoners in California wear denim blue pants, shirts, and jackets. In Florence, Colorado, maximum security prisoners wear khaki shirts and pants. In Cleveland, prisoners have to wear pink shirts and yellow and white striped pants for maximum visibility. Free Mantle Prison 75 English prisoners docked in Australia on June 1, 1850, surprising the residents of the nearby colony. Although they had requested British convicts to perform skilled labor, the ship carrying the prisoners arrived without advance notice. The prisoners were immediately put to work constructing their own prison. They quarried limestone by hand and eventually built a main cell block, a gatehouse, high perimeter walls, a hospital sh workshops, cookhouse, bakery, laundry, and six residences for high-ranking officers. Behind the bars, also known as Fremantle Gale, located in the Terence Fremantle in Western Australia, operational 1855 to 1991. Number of prisoners, before they stopped transporting inmates, 9,700 prisoners were transported to Fremantle. Notable inmates, Brendan Abbott, bank robber, Bon Scott, former lead singer of ACDC, what happened to him? I never knew that he got arrested. <laughs> now I'm going to have to look that up after this. Daily life. The gigantic Fremantle prison has housed just about every type of prisoner imaginable over its 120-year history. Convicted felons, illegal immigrants, prisoners of war, and political prisoners. The conditions were harsh. Inmates worked 10 hours a day while wearing leg irons and shackles, which bruised and wore away the skin. They were beaten and whipped when they disobeyed the guards. Sometimes they were locked in windowless cells where they lost track of time in the darkness. Inescapable. Some did try to escape, but they rarely succeeded. The climate and wild animals of Western Australia were too harsh and dangerous. The land outside the colony was almost entirely unsettled, and miles of thick outback bush lay between the prisoners and the ocean. In fact, the land around Fremantle was so difficult to travel through that officials called Fremantle a prison within a prison. The end. In 1964, an inmate was hanging, hanged at Fremantle, making him one of the last people to be executed in the country of Australia. Fremantle closed in 1991, ending its legacy as one of the largest convict prisons in the world. Fleeing from Fremantle, the story of the Shark Bay escape. In 1859, five inmates from Fremantle were sent to perform manual labor in town. However, they used this opportunity to escape and disappear into the bush. Police rounded up native people called Aborigines to help track the convicts through the wilderness. Amazingly, the convicts next sneaked past the lookout master and stole a dinghy, a small boat not meant for open sea sailing. They rode to a small road to a small island where they stole a larger boat and set out to sea. At this point, the escapees had a bit of luck. As they were rowing north out to sea, they found the police boat was tied up, ready to carry the governor out to his vacation site. By the time the police got back to their boat, the convicts had a head start. For 500 miles, the men endured heat, wind, and huge open waves. When the police finally managed to capture the fugitives, they found that only four of the five were alive. The fifth had been murdered by his comrades. His crime? He had taken more than a share of drinking water. Ohio State Reformatory When construction began on the Ohio State Reformatory on November 4, 1886, the people of Mansfield, Ohio cheered, and the newspaper headline declared it Mansfield's greatest day. The city had campaigned to be the site of the reformatory, expecting it would bring jobs and an economic boost. Behind the Bars, also known as Mansfield's Reformatory, located in Mansfield, Ohio, operational 1896-1990. Number of prisoners, 150,000 during the time the pr prison was open. Notable inmates, Henry Baker, a member of the Great Branks Robbery Gang.
boys to men, the Mansfield Reformatory, as it was sometimes called, was meant to serve as a transitional transition between juvenile detention and the Ohio Penitentiary. During its first year, 150 boys moved in, most of whom were first-time offenders. Eventually, the reformatory would house 155,000 boys and men during the 100 years it was operational. Built on the site of a former Civil War camp, the grand architecture was designed to intimidate prisoners and inspire regret. It has been called Dracula's Castle, and many contemporary film and television producers have been drawn to its dramatic towers, archways, and echoing chambers. Portions of the 1994 Oscar-nominated film The The Shawshank Redemption were shot there. The prison has one of the largest freestanding cell blocks in the world, which rises six stories high. Prison Ghost Ghost legends abound at the Mansfield Reformatory. Visitors have reported doors slamming, the feeling of being pushed or scratched, and strange voices that cry out from empty cells. The museum runs a thriving ghost hunting business, and paranormal investigators come from all over the country to investigate these reports. Some bring special equipment for detecting ghosts. Ghost hunters have reported cold spots and equipment malfunctions, which paranormal believers take to mean that spirit energy is present. Some say the former prison warden's voice can be heard in the abandoned prison office. His wife's perfume can still be smelled in a private bathroom, or so the story goes. During the prison ghost hunts, guides sometimes use a device called a dowsing rod to talk to spirits. A dowsing rod looks like two long L-shaped wires. The guide holds them in his or her hands and asks questions to a ghost nearby. According to the guide, the movement of the wires indicate if the guest has re- ghost has responded yes or no. Is Manfield really haunted by the spirits of those who died there? Or do the visitors have an overactive imagination and then desire for their connection with the spirit world?